Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's Meg Schmitz and the Free Agent Podcast, where the discussion is all about free agency and taking control over your future. The mission of my show is to share inspiring conversations with real people who took the leap into self-employment, business ownership, sometimes franchising, but freedom is really what we are all looking for as self-employed people. From cor corporate refugees and executives tired of the desk job to entrepreneurs and investors looking to share camaraderie and inspiration through their business journey, my podcast aims a spotlight on real people who stepped into the unknown, took control of their destiny, and became their own boss. A lot of the time, you won't hear these conversations unless you, the listener, are actively talking to people about business ownership and, and asking these people, what is it like? And so, Stacy Cat is my guest today. She's an amazing photographer. We're going to talk about the ups and the downs, navigating sneak attacks, and yet producing amazing, successful outcomes. So welcome, Stacy. Thank you for having me, Meg. I'm excited to be here. Well, you and I met, I have to look in my diary, but I think it's about a year ago, almost plus or minus to the day. Yeah. We had our photo shoot in your studio, and that was an amazing experience for me uh, to come to your studio at the beginning of this crazy pandemic and <laughs> trying to navigate how close can we get to each other and the styling for the event, but it was handled with such humor and grace. Um, I, I applaud your professionalism in navigating at that point what was a sneak attack yeah. and uh, a little disconcerting. Yeah, we didn't know what to do, right? We were just kind of like, okay, here we are. <laughs> we're going for it. And so... As a photographer who's working with business people as well as individuals, you yeah. have your finger on the pulse in Milwaukee and, and maybe a broader reach than that, um, not only for your own business development, but taking pictures and, and really getting inside the hearts and the heads of these people who have come to you for professional photography. Yeah. So I wanted I want to ask you about your finger on the pulse of where do you think where do you think business is for you personally now coming into the second quarter of 2021? And then what are you hearing from the people who are coming in for your studio events? Well, I think for me, I feel like there's always a lull at the beginning of the year, every year. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, like March hit and things started going crazy and, and people started calling and, and the action started taking place. And so I feel uh, very positive about the future for my business. I think we're for sure going to see some failure. I mean, I think the restaurant business has really struggled and I've been seeing a lot of things closed down, but um, I, you know, it's funny, I'm getting a lot of people who have, well, they've been booted out of their corporate jobs and, you know, they lost their jobs and they're starting their own businesses. So, you know, I think it's great. I think there's going to be success in a lot of areas and there's going to be failure in some areas too. Um, but the people that are coming in here are, you know, forward thinking. Um, you know, they're coming in, they're getting their headshots, they're getting their website pictures taken and, you know, they're ready to move forward. And so is there anything that you did with your photography business in the year of 2020 that maybe positioned you for this uptick now that we're in 2021? Yeah, well, you know, I feel like I didn't position myself as well as I could have. I kind of stepped back from mm -hmm. social media a little bit. And I kind of went more into an introversion time for myself where I worked on building this personal brand course. I updated my website and I didn't do as much networking. Um, but what I did do is I offered um, still to meet with people one-on-one -on -one with Zoom. And I was offering um, half an hour consultations on people's personal brand. And so I did kind of get that in motion. Um, so I think... I think what I did for myself was kind of a necessity. Like, I think I was kind of burnt out <laughs> on all the networking and stuff. And I think I needed that break. Yeah, it offered, the the second half of last year really offered a lot of us time for self-reflection self and self-care. Yeah. To re-engage with family, especially for those corporate warriors who'd been on the road quite a bit. It is 
really interesting to me how how here we are in spring and it does feel like people, especially those corporate refugees, have taken their breather. It's like they're coming out of hibernation. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It and feels so like that. Are there any new new um, techniques or things that you're doing in the studio that make it feel fresher for you? Well, a couple things happened. I so <laughs> I met this filmmaker from LA who kept we had this conversation going for months. I met him like last summer or fall, and we decided to do a video, a promotional video for me. So with that and all of his ideas that he had, we ended up rearranging my studio and adding like a special makeup area with lighting. I rearranged and changed the seating. I'm in the process of figuring out how I can expand my small space to maybe be have more options as far as what I can photograph. Um, you've been here, you know it's pretty small. Um, I can photograph one or two people, but if we need more space or more uh, stuff in the set. It's really hard to fit that in. So I'm trying to do that. So I'm kind of in this like revamp, uh, just making myself capable of doing more in the studio. And I shoot on location too, but still having that opportunity to shoot bigger, more things in the studio is what I've been trying to do. Cool. Yeah. We, you and I had so much fun playing in the, playing in the studio and using different pieces of equipment, shoes, clothing, the, the, <laughs> wasn't set changes so much as wardrobe changes and changing around of, of some of the interesting um, elements of my life that people don't know about. And so to me, that was the, the game changer in working with you is how you inspired me to include the different elements of my life so that when we did the photo show to shoot, it was clear that I am a multidimensional, interesting human being who does more than right. just franchising. Exactly. Yeah. Is that something that you grew into or have you always been one who looks at those multi-dimensions of your, of your subject? Well, I think when I restarted my business, I, ch I shifted gears from doing uh, portraits, family portraits, weddings, and shifted into the business arena. And with that, I guess my background working with commercial photographers really brought in the what is this picture saying? How is this picture going to be used? And is it sending the right message? And that's where you kind of have to dive into, you know, who is this individual? Who is their target market? What do they want other people to know about them? And how can we express that in pictures? So it really was definitely a grow into thing as I changed my business, you know, model, I guess. How long have you been an independent photographer? Oh my gosh. I quit my job in 1995 uh, and started my business. I just quit my job and started doing freelance commercial assisting with other photographers. And so what was the catalyst for you to take that leap? Was, was, and was there any trepidation going along with that? You know, <laughs> you know, when you're young, you don't have a lot of, you're, your brain is just more focused on where am I going? And you kind of don't think that much about for you. how difficult it could be. <laughs> and I, I guess what happened was, is I didn't know that this opportunity existed, except for that I was working in an internship when I was in college with a commercial photographer. And then she turned me on to this whole idea that, you know, you can assist commercial photographers and make a living doing that. And I thought, what a great learning experience that would be. I'm getting paid to learn. Yeah. Uh, even though I had my degree in photography, it wasn't like I had the experience working as a commercial photographer. So, yeah, I don't know. I just took the leap, right? I mean, I just really kind of, one day I just quit my job and I had some opportunities and I took them. And so was there a point there where you went, oh my God, like that, holy crap moment or that, oh, aha, this is mine. Or maybe you had both. But do you remember those those early days or, or once the honeymoon was over, <laughs> what honeymoon. that felt like? <laughs> well, I guess when you have slow periods and you don't have any money coming in, that gets a little scary. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, you know, I was married not too long after I started my business. And so I never really worried about financials that much. 
until seven years ago when I got divorced. And that changed everything for me. In my networking group that meets every Wednesday morning, we were talking last week about getting outside of your head or being stuck in your head about cold calling, networking, self-promotion, um, verbalizing, um, distilling down into the essence of, of who you are. And there's nothing like fear <laughs> <laughs> to motivate us into, into um, summarizing those elements that make Stacy Stacy and different. And so how would you describe yourself today uh, as a photographer? How would I describe myself today? <laughs> That's a tricky question. <laughs> um, from a mindset perspective, I would say that in the beginning, it was, you know, there was so much struggle and how am I going to make it on my own, you know, when I got divorced and restarted because I quit for a few years. And when I restarted my business with a new focus, I would say it was very scary from a, like, am I going to make enough money? You know, am I good enough? I think, am I good enough is always something that a lot of people go through, especially when they first start. Am I good enough? Can I do this? Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things that helped me get out of my mind was having a coach, someone who had business experience, someone who could help you navigate that mindset. And um, I did that. I had, I've had several coaches over the years, and I'm still in coaching right now. Um, for different things. Yeah. And I think that mindset is one of the most important things is you have to stay positive and keep forward thinking when you make decisions, I think. This comes up almost 100% of the time during this interview that to a person, and call, call us free agents, we are, but we have to have just like a, a good athlete, a mentor, a coach, a voice in the head, whether it's from the way back machine, that first person who inspired you to go out on your own, or who really made you um, get in touch with your grit and your stick to and that inner terrier that we have to tap into <laughs> as self-employed people. So, and so over the years, have you had different coaches who helped you achieve different goals or who helped you shift the paradigm? How would you describe these different mentors or coaches? Well, I think the first one really helped me figure out where am I going in my newfound new business, right? And then there's, um, you know, sales coaching to help you with your sales process so that it's not a sales process. It's a, what does the client need process? How can you help the client process? Um, so I think there, you know, gosh, I just had a QuickBooks coach too to help me learn how to use QuickBooks. So I didn't keep screwing it up. <laughs> yeah. Talk about efficiencies. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hire around your weaknesses. Yes. There's so many places where, you know, I think the mindset to me was probably the top thing, you know, and then the other thing is, is having, a, I had a CRM coach as well. Mm -hmm. And that was so helpful too, because here I have a CRM. Now, what do I do with it? How do I use it? How do I make it work for me? And I think it's, how do you make with all the technology we have now too, how do we learn how to use this technology and make that work for us too? Yeah, business is so metric driven when it comes right down to it. And that's in my first Friday networking meeting, we've got a couple of people. One is the data magician. Um, then we've got Tamara Burkett, who's the CRM specialist yep. and, and breaking it down from social media use and the different platforms and what message do you put out there to then measuring the impact. Well, I've I've been less interested in metrics over the years and much more <laughs> interested in the softer side of, of working with people. Yeah. So but to your point, if if you if we are going to up our game and capture more of 2021 and beyond, really, you yeah. and I are women of a certain age. We're not getting younger, but we still have a lot of um, achievement and and um, gosh, I've got a big goal for this year. 
oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I, March and <laughs> April are already kind of busting me in the chest. I know. I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you get up in the morning knowing that you need to contact your coach or do you have regular sessions where you can look forward and plan for those? I have a uh, regular coaching, you know, like today, well, tomorrow, what day is it? Tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, we have like every other Wednesday, we have a uh, group coaching and then I'm also in a mastermind group. So yeah, sometimes there's some preparation involved. It helps keep me, you know, up to speed with where I'm supposed to be going. And I think the whole planning process to help you achieve your goals. So when you get up in the morning, you look at what you have to do and you know, you know that this is what I have to accomplish today yeah. to move forward. And some days don't go like you planned. Woo-wee, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday was right. one of those days. Pete, my husband looked at me at about 3.30 in the afternoon and he said, did you, did you want that glass of wine now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some, and that's really key for self-employed people, whether you've got employees or no employees, I have no employees directly right now, but we've got hundreds of employees seasonally. And sometimes you have to know when to peel away, hang up the phone, get off Zoom and unplug. Yeah, you you do. I am not be toxic. I just decided, you know what? I'm not going to look at my email. I'm not looking at Facebook. I'm not doing anything. And it was such a beautiful weekend. It was a great time to, to do that. Yeah, to recharge. So mm-hmm. with the people who are coming in, say these corporate refugees to to do their headshots or starting a business, yeah. What what would you say is a common theme for these people who are coming to see you? I think most of them know that they have to put themselves out there. And pictures is kind of a starting point for them. So typically they're working on a new website and pictures and their copy for their website. And then they may not have a social media strategy yet, but they're, they're kind of, they just, they know that they have to put themselves out there and they're taking those steps. And I'm, I'm really surprised at how well organized and how well thought out some of these people are with their messaging and what they're, you know, in just moving forward. It's pretty, it, I'm pretty amazed by some of these people. I think the people you are meeting with have gone through some of the self-doubt and, or the confidence yeah. that they're coming in with to say, okay, 2020 knocked me out of the perch. 2020 or looking forward into later this year, I don't want to go back to that toxic office. I don't want to go back to the glass ceiling. I don't want to go back to ageism and meh. And so they've already tackled some of the self-doubt and confidence building. So I would think that the people who are coming in to see you are already coming with a vision and, and, but maybe still looking for some creative input from you. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's kind of a mix. Like usually they have a vision and then, you know, talking about the little details of that and um, just because I've, I have so much knowledge in so many different areas, I don't feel like I'm an expert in any one thing, but I usually can talk to them about their copy and even, you know, give them suggestions for improvement on that. And, you know, remember that the copy and the images got to have to go together. They have to have a similar message so that people, when they see the picture and they read the copy, they get it. And yeah, I think um, a lot of these people have been, they've already been networking. They've been taking these mini little, you know, learning about your why and learning about copy and learning about SEO. And so they're all kind of learning all these different pieces as well. And so for anyone who's listening to this, I think this is really good insight into building into your exit strategy and the launch of your new thing stack up the different layers of, of, like you said, there's the why, but a lot of people should watch that Simon Sinek video. Yeah. yeah. I was about, just thinking about that before we got on today. Yeah. The what's why. your why? Because we all, oh, so Stacy, it's really interesting. So what do you do? Oh, how did you get into that? Or how, how do you do that? And the essence of it all, the kernel and the, in, the very middle of it all is why, why do you do what you do? So for anyone who's looking to become a free agent, 
tackle those questions yeah. and know that like any free agent, and I interviewed one last week, he has no agent, he's got no team, he's going out for, for camp right now, trying to make a team. He doesn't have the same support structure that you've talked about already. And yeah. yet he's like a terrier trying to break through. So really for you people thinking about starting your own business, ask for help, get yourself some mentoring. Yes. And build into it so that when you go to Stacy, because I'll just tell anybody who's really wondering what Stacy does. She <laughs> play, she plays in the studio. This is all about fun and bringing the essence of who you are out into the pictures. Right. And really, when I look at not just my own pictures, but some of the other people I know in Milwaukee who's portraits you've posted, you do such a great job of, of eliciting the person and, and bringing the fun out. Yeah, I think it's important. I've got a really interesting guy coming in this week who is a, cons a business consultant. Um, and he's kind of a quirky, interesting guy. And, um, you know, he mentioned that he just has a little bit of trouble at first because he's so passionate about what he does that he dives right in that he kind of freaks people out. And I'm like, you need to show these people some of your quirky, playful side. And then I said, break the ice with that. You know, you kind of break the ice with people seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it is easy sometimes to be exuberant and puppy-like and <laughs> run over your prospect with too much enthusiasm. But hey, that's way better than being the opposite and being a, a limp noodle and, and not really presenting yourself well and, and in a succinct fashion. It is important for photography to represent the message, particularly in business. It needs to be appropriate and professional and, and yet differentiate your subject from right. allow them to realize how they're differentiating themselves from other people who are similar. Right, right. Exactly. You have to be different. You have to show your difference. Is there anything... I haven't asked you that you think is important for a listener to know either about your business or about your, your growth trajectory as a self-employed person. Well, I think the most important thing for people to, you know, think about in, in business is when it comes to visuals is that those visuals represent the authentic you and that they, you know, your headshot, especially, it's one of those things where when people are scrolling through on LinkedIn or you introduce yourself to them on LinkedIn or online and they see your headshot, is it like, like, I feel like right now, like us here looking at each other eye to eye, I feel like we're in person because we feel comfortable with each other. Yeah. And I think a headshot needs to express that too, um, that like, meet you in person, like a virtual handshake, like we're meeting eye to eye and we're excited to see each other and we're smiling because we're making a connection, right? It's not a deer in the headlight. It's, it's, you know, yes, we want you to look good and there's lighting and positioning and all that. But to me, one of the most important things you can do in business is just get a really good headshot. <laughs> and that is a, a big bugaboo for me as someone who has been hibernating on our, our farm property for the last 12, 13 months to actively network via LinkedIn and then move to Zoom, when yeah. the headshot doesn't match the person who shows up on screen, it's a huge um, disparity a couple of weeks ago with a gentleman whose headshot, his hair is dyed, he's wearing suspenders, he's got a red bow tie. Well, here we are at that point, we we're about a year into this pandemic and he's clearly let himself go. And the wow. man who showed up for the, <laughs> for the meeting <laughs> was not the man I thought I was connected to. And, and his yeah. whole demeanor was off as well. So another great point for the listener is get yourself a good headshot and work with a photographer so that you're confident that how you appear in social media yes. is going to match the expectation then of the in-person, whether that's virtual or face-to-face. -face. Right. And don't let yourself go just because it's virtual. Like, really? I mean, I get the comfort thing and all that. And hey, I'm not wearing my fancy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I mean, I, you still want to be, you know, present yourself as a, the business person that you are. If you were going to meet someone in person, would you look that way? Well, I've had some people say, oh, well, you know, I can't get in for for color treatment, which you can. Oh, I haven't gone in for a haircut or, oh, COVID-19 turned into COVID-20. Indeed, for some people, it, it did. But yeah. for example, this Friday, I'm driving into town for a face-to-face half-day networking session. And something um, that I heard back in January is you have to think about beauty above the mask. <laughs> yeah, right. You're not don't have to worry about your mustache or lipstick or whatever's ha- happening <laughs> right. under here. But you do have to think about everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And definitely. as you said, like the shoe thing, um, <laughs> today I'm not wearing anything particularly fancy, but I do have, <laughs> you know, I still have my personality oh, showing on my shoe. <laughs> I do too, but they just don't match. <laughs> well, it's a good time of year <laughs> to start thinking about wardrobe and and getting back out there. And, and oh yeah, I would have you talk about your your contact information. But really, people, if you're if you want to be represented in the best light possible with great photography, Stacy, why don't you give us your contact information so that people can come and visit you or your website and to see sure. your CV of work? Yeah, so it's um, stacycott.com is the website. So it's S-T-A-C-Y and the last name is K double A T dot com stacycott.com or stacy at stacycott.com you can email me or you can even call me at 414-758-0622 i am in milwaukee but i do work in the surrounding areas and i have a studio in bayview and you've done on-site photography too i do yeah i do location photography as well too mostly corporate um, yeah, most now nowadays it's mostly corporate. I can do headshot events on location as well. I do quite a bit of that. Um, I think that's a great resource for anyone who is listening, who is part of the corporate culture and sees the need for their executives now that we're leaving to some degree work from home and going back right. into the office to brush up that professional image yeah. for your executive leadership team. Well, and you know, it's not that hard to do that very safely. I mean, depending upon how people feel, some people feel more comfortable than others. It's really easy to create an event on a location where it's completely safe. So it's, you know, it's not hard to do at all. And we had loads of fun doing ours. And so for anyone who'd like to see the photography that Stacy did for me, that's at MegSchmitz.com. And um, I was just saying at the beginning of this that that an ad um, promoting an article that I'm writing for a publication, online publication, is utilizing one of my favorite pictures of me (laughs) resting my head on a stack of business books that are inspirational with my eyes closed and dreaming about the wealth and the (laughs) love. Lovely. I love that picture. <laughs> lovely benefits of being self-employed. So yes. check out check out Stacy's pictures at my website too. Thank you for joining me today, and um, this is going to be a great year for you and for me. I think and so. One of the reasons why I think so and know so is that you and I are dig down terrier kind of people who are just going to make it work. So. Yep. From my coffee cup to yours. Cheers. Mine says queen. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Well, that's great. You look at that and you see that every day. Good for you. (laughs) 